Hey everyone, welcome to another interview on The Hungry People. Today I have a good friend of mine on, his name is Brandon? Brendan? Is that how you pronounce it? Brendan. Brendan. <laughs> um, we've met, we met at the Pranic Festival, I believe, and then we've hung out once or twice at Kim and Jeremy's for Thanks Living. And I'm going to let you talk a little bit about where you're from, who you are, your age, and if you, if you would take over. Of course, yeah, we met at um, a Chronic Tribe. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm 20 years old or 21 since April 4th. I, I can't even keep track of age. Um, yeah, the whole way that I started with the with the raw diet and just being part of this whole um, the thanks living and I guess you could call it tribe thing is um, when I was 18, fresh out of high school, I was like, I'm ready to start my life. And then all of a sudden, my, my lungs collapsed out of nowhere. Um, I'm a double spontaneous pneumothorax patient. And I found that whenever I had as much meat and dairy that I had growing up, my body didn't like that. And my lungs just collapsed out of nowhere. And what so, do you mean by not like that? Do you mean it created inflammation or mucus or kind of like in the lung? Yeah. No, it, it, was, it was it was mucus that um, they, they called it blebs that formed along the lining of the lungs. And whenever those blebs would burst from having too much fluid in them, the, the lungs would then have air that pressed on the inside and then collapsed them. And was it painful? Oh, it was exquisitely painful. And they both did it at the same time. The, the right one went first and then they had to operate on it. You know, they had to shore it up in their words and then left one went soon after, like six days after. Okay, and you were still in the hospital when that happened at least, right? Yep. So it was good. At, like, were, were you at home when it originally all happened or did you did you get rushed, rushed to the hospital? So like some people think that it was like a really sudden thing, but it actually started surfacing when I was about 16 because it it was like this very subtle clicking that I felt in my chest. And I was like, is that like a muscular thing or what, what is that? Turns out that that was air that was very slowly leaking into my chest cavity. And that air would eventually be reabsorbed because I had, I was still really young. And I, I obviously I still am young, but like, you know, as I got older, then, you know, my body couldn't keep up with constantly reabsorbing all that air. And then when it couldn't reabsorb anymore, it just collapsed. Wow. Okay. And do you remember like where you were? Were you at home or were you on your way to the hospital because you didn't feel right? What was going on? Yeah, I was in a lot of pain, just like uh, not toward the top, but like actually closer toward like my midsection. And apparently that was where a lot of the leak happened. And yeah, I was actually laying in bed because being flat on my back was the most painful. Felt like a knife was just in my chest. And I was like, okay, this is not muscular. This is like something seriously wrong. And I went to the chiropractor because I, I had been going there saying, then they said that I had a lot of knots in my shoulder and I was like, oh, so it's shoulder pain. But then once they did a chest x-ray, they were like, your right lung is 90% collapsed. And I was like, ow. <laughs> did you breathe? Yeah, my left lung was doing all the work for a while, but then once the left one went, it was 50% collapsed. So it was pretty uncomfortable. Okay, and were you just like on oxygen or what did they do to help you to breathe? Yep, they put me on oxygen and they got me in the operating room pretty quickly after that point. And what did they do from there? What they did was, uh, I was really happy they didn't actually cut me open. They actually put tubes in on the front and back of my body. And, you know, the one was a camera, the other one was actually the, the operating tool. And they snipped off the tops of my lungs and used my chest cavity to seal it because toward the top is where most of the concentrated blubs were. Okay. And then since my chest cavity was covering those up, then they weren't leaking so severely anymore. So that was only like, I guess you could call it a Band-Aid, but continuing on, continuing on from that point, there were a lot of people who I found on forums and there was even one girl who I talked to like in, in person who she was like, yeah, every six months I have to go back and get it shored up again. And I was like, how could you live with that? I mean, that was the most painful experience in my life, you know, for, it was a whole month that they had to do, go through, you know, fixing and get every, everything right. right. And then an, another three months where I was out of commission, I couldn't do anything. Yeah. So, so you were, so it sounds as though, you know, on this podcast, I've had a lot of people who had really crappy luck with 
seeing physicians and trying to seek help. But in this case, you know, you couldn't have done it without the physician. Like they, they saved your life, right? Absolutely. I mean, there's people who could have done it through diet and like, like those early signs I was talking about when I was yeah. 16. And the Maybe if it was found a little earlier, it could have been more preventive. If I would have recognized like, and, and it still did pain me when I was 16. I remember, I remember that clicking hurt. I was like, what is that? But I never actually went to the doctor for it. And therefore I never actually understood what it was until it was too late. So, yeah. But then you were finding out more and more that it's not like it was a done deal and it was fixed. You could be facing issues with this going forward continuously. Right. Mm -hmm. So what happened from there? So I went down to about, I think 127 pounds. I'm six one, so it, yeah, it you're worked. taller than me. Yeah, um, and you know, I was working at Giant Eagle at the time. Was not still working past that point because I could, I could barely even stand on my own two feet. I was so skinny; like any movement was really painful for my chest. Right. It was just and a very slow recovery, and <clears throat> at that point, I was already starting to get into diet. I was watching people like John Rose and Fully Rock, Fully Roth Christina, right? And and I was like, man, these guys really have a good point here. Like you know you have to give the body what it needs so that it doesn't fail because my yeah. body was failing at that time right it, was a, it, it sounds really scary were you scared oh i was horrified i was like am i not gonna actually make it i mean there, there were times when i was in the hospital when i was in such pain like every single breath was like a knife in my chest i was like i don't know if i can make it through this and I'm really glad that the doctor didn't tell me until after the whole experience. He was like, yeah, like one in three people don't make it through this. I was like, wow. Yeah. And how was your family with you with all this? I yeah. mean, were they freaking out too? Or? My, my parents were really distraught about it. Um, I've had family problems in the past and they kind of started to resurface. Um, my parents were separated since I was 12. So they, they both had a bit of, they had different perspectives on it, but like, I, I don't want to get into that. Yeah, of it, course. It was just no very traumatic. Yeah, I'm sure. Sorry to hear that. No, um, okay. So coming out of it, you started to heal a little bit and you started to find people like John Rose, Fully Ball Christina, who are really big, just for everyone listening, really big uh, people on YouTube. I think Christina was a student of John Rose and she's actually Dan McDonald, Life Regenerator's neighbor now in Hawaii. <laughs> And I actually met her in Hawaii one time. But these people who recommend really ideally raw fruits and vegetables, you know, I know we have a common theme on this, on these last few interviews, but so you started finding those videos and started maybe adapting some of it. Like how did, how did that transition go? Um, the transition of like, of my diet or well, my- Well, finding them and then how did it start to, where did you go from there after you found the videos? Yeah. Um, so I had been watching John Rose for a while. Um, and it, I think it started with Christina because I saw a, like a really cool looking uh, juice recipe that she made. I was like, that looks delicious. And then I saw the video where she met John Rose and I was like, well, who's this guy? And um, then hearing John Rose talk, I was like, this guy's really down to earth and I can really get behind what he's saying. And when I read about or not, I also watched a lot of videos about his juice fasting. I decided that it would be best for my body to do a juice fast. And were you already low weight at this point? I was, I had to let myself gain a bit more weight because I, I, I learned from him that you could lose weight throughout the juice fast, which I absolutely did. Um, so yeah, I let myself gain like eight pounds since surgery. And then after that, I was like, okay, it's juice fast time. And you were and relatively I, like at what weight when you started? So 127 was my lowest weight. And then when I started juice fasting, I had to have been like, I gained more than eight pounds. I was like 145, 146. Okay, so you weren't too low. And, and yeah, since I've, uh, this, this is gonna be jumping around, but That's since awesome. I've had my eyes scanned from uh, Mark Gordon, um, that, that even further confirmed my already suspicion that I had that, um, that I have malabsorption because it's so hard for me to gain weight. Yeah. Um, but for the juice fast, I, I figured that would really fix my, uh, my malabsorption. It, it helped a good bit because I, I went for 80 days and it was, uh, it, it started to get a bit hard toward the end, especially since I was starting to feel pretty hungry. 
I struggled a lot. <laughs> I struggled a lot with my juicer, and uh, it, it was uh, a masticator, which I I'd learned that it was like a really quality one. It's just not the fastest. Yeah, but and it's not easy when you're already feeling like down and weak, and you're trying to help yourself when you're really broken down, and you have to do all this chopping and prepping and chopping and washing and juicing and straining. It's just like. Even that just takes so much. Do you feel that way? Yeah, it, I started to get spiteful toward the end. I was like, why am I so bad at this? Why is it taking so long? And I was like, okay, I need to calm down. Like, this is for my body. This is, you know, I'm doing the right thing for my body. And, and I absolutely did, you know. I haven't had to go back to the hospital in three years now. And to them, that's unheard of. Like, how could you not have your lungs not showed up again? You know? Wow, really? Okay. <laughs> So yeah, the, the doctor told me, he was like, yeah, and you, you'll probably have to come back here in about six months to a year and have it shored up again. I was like, I can't do that. No way. And are you still going and getting checked on or did you just feel like you're healthy enough? You don't feel the need to like, what, what's your mindset going into? I feel I'm healthy enough. My, I don't have any more pains and I just haven't gone back since. Gotcha. Do you feel as though if you had some pain, you would get it checked out to kind of see where you're at? Absolutely. I mean, if I, I know that pain very well, like where it is and how, like, you know, how, uh, what's the word, how often it happens, like when you actually have a problem. So it's like, yeah, I okay. absolutely get fixed. I'm not going to let myself go down. <laughs> yeah, right. I was just thinking because it, early on you were saying how it kind of waited until it was a bit, you know, worse than it had to be. So I just wanted to make sure you're all good, man. Um, yeah, thank you. But that's great. So you started, you did the juice fast, you started to lose weight again, and you were feeling like you were ready to eat. You were getting pretty agitated and hungry and kind of beating yourself up a little bit. So what happened next? I know why I started getting agitated. It's because I wasn't feeding myself enough juice. Um, okay. I remember uh, people, not just John Rose, but other people on forums saying like, yeah, you need at least a gallon. Some people need a gallon and a half. I, I in reality, needed two gallons because of my malabsorption and you know, the juice went right through me. I was, you know, going to the bathroom all day, every day when I was doing it. Wow. Um, stool. Yeah, and there was stool throughout all 80 days, which blew my mind. I was like, so is it really that much that was stuck inside of me? Um, right. So then, you know, I talked with my dad about it. He was like, well, you know, there was probably a good bit of pulp that was still going through, even though I strained it. Right. So, and the stool was like, without getting gross like it was extremely thin so it was like i probably was cleared out yeah right like maybe you're just go pushing it a little longer than right. um then you uh like you might have gotten rid of most of the buildup that you were trying to if there was build up already before you actually stopped yeah okay so then so then you transition into more food i did i um were you on able to day, eat raw food? Yeah, on day 80, I had the prunes, like John Rose's protocol. So asked prunes, for. Yeah. And oh my God, that was the best tasting food I ever had in my life because after 80 days of not eating anything, I was like, oh my God, I want to have prunes every day now. And I was like, okay, calm down. It's just, I haven't eaten in so long. You know, it's funny. I was talking with someone on one of the other interviews and uh, Dan McDonald was talking about how he did some kind of seven day water fast. And then like after he broke, he had ended up having some cabbage and he said it tasted like a Snickers bar. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. It's like, it was just so full of flavor from being, you know, being hungry, I guess. Yeah. And having hungry like people. a cleaner palate. <laughs> yeah. Hungry yeah. people. Okay. And then how did you feel then? Um, yeah. Once I started getting some food in me, I had some cantaloupe and watermelon, just kind of easing myself back into food. And I just had loads of energy, which I never experienced before. And at, I think it was really at that time in my life that I realized like, okay, diet is so much more important than anyone realizes. Even the doctors, right. like the doctors gave me no dietary information whatsoever. They were just like, yeah, live your life, eat as you will, and just go back to normal. I was like, yeah. something's not right. Were you eating the hospital food while you were there? I was, and I got food poisoning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was rough. I think uh, that says it all. <laughs> I got, uh, one, they, they call it a strawberry dessert. And I was like, oh, strawberry, this is great. And there was like uh, this really stale chocolate with uh, strawberries mixed in. And I was like, it's not bad. And then I was thrown up all night. And they were like, 
and and the nurse came and was like what happened and i was like i got food poisoning and she was like in a hospital food poisoning no way i was like well then what made me sick <laughs> yeah wow i mean it's funny now but it's sad to hear really oh it was brutal and i this is something that probably like two other people in the world have ever experienced but like throwing up with the collapsed lungs is terrible <laughs> Dude, I, I was thinking about it when you first said it, and I was like, I don't even want to ask because it sounds painful. <laughs> it was excruciating. Like, oh, my God, my, my lungs hurt. And then it's like, oh, God, we got to go again. <laughs> it yeah. was so bad. Jeez. So you're feeling, so you're noticing that food really has a, plays a part in how you feel. And you're oh eating God, the melons, it's... you're eating, you're transitioning back into food, which I'm sure you're so happy about. You're ready to probably gain some weight. Um, yeah. Okay, what, what, walk me through what happened next. Say again? Walk me through what happened next. Yeah, so after that, um, I just started eating more and more um, from the produce aisle. You know, I would eat. Um, I, I started. That's I think that's really really started getting my uh, my love for avocados because, um, you know, I've I've talked to you about how much I love avocados. I'm I'm really trying to gain weight because I'm up to I think like 150 ish right now. That's awesome. And I'd still like to be more. Yeah, um, of course. And so, you know, avocados being fatty as they are, those and bananas are really nice for me. Right. Um, but yeah, I started eating meals that were entirely like, you know, I'd have um, like two or three mangoes then have uh, tomatoes and blueberries mixed in. And I just, I throw it all in a big bowl. And, um, you know, I- Did you I, feel I satisfied when you ate? Oh, absolutely. Especially after the fast. Like that's all I, that's all my body needed. Yeah. Um, yeah it takes had, a while to rebuild um, that, that larger volume and the appetite and everything like that. Did you mm -hmm. notice your digestion being good or did you, a lot of people eat too much in the beginning and they get constipated. Did you have any issues with that? I never got constipated. All the food went right, right through me really well. Um, I think the juice fast really did it for me. Uh, my, my palate got completely changed. I never got cravings for ice cream and chocolate like I used to. Like that that stuff was was really like big time cravings for me growing up. Right. And then, you know, every once in a while a cooked meal that my parents were preparing would really set me like, oh my God, that smells delicious. But yeah, you know, ever like, you know, a year goes by, two years go by and it's like, I'm fine now. That's great. So do you stick to mostly a raw diet still? And how long ago since you broke has it been? Since you broke um, the fast. Since I broke the juice fast. Yeah, how long has it been since then? I think probably two years, because I'm 21 now. Okay. And then when I was like, I think maybe maybe three years, because 18 I had the lung problem. 19 is when I was start, starting to get back on my feet, and then I had the juice fast. So yeah, okay. two years. Okay. And did you find yourself eating mostly raw for the last two years? I had entirely raw for about a year and a half. And then I was like, well, those cooked beans look pretty nice. <laughs> yeah. um, right. Ever yeah. since then I'll have, you know, some cooked um, sweet potatoes and other stuff as well. Did you find that that feels fun for you? Yeah. Um, right. I remember I had a little bit of a slowdown, not constipation, just it kind of, I felt it going through me where yeah. I wouldn't feel stuff going through me usually. Um, it's just, you know, slowing down the bowels that kind of have a speed that they like to go. Right. When you pull, when you're so used to this high hydrating foods going through you, all of a sudden you have something that's a little drier. It's either going to take some more water to constant, uh, compensate out of the body, or it doesn't go down a little slower, but generally it's still a really healthy food. And actually even cooking potatoes still has a decent amount of water in it compared mm -hmm. to other foods like bread. Bread is like zero. It takes your, the water out of your body you know, but, okay, so did you find yourself getting stronger and healthier or what are some of the problems you faced going forward um, or yeah. the, or the wins? Work was difficult for me since, you know, with the diet that I was on, I was kind of eating like all day since I was always hungry, but yeah, that, that food really did it for me. It was just a matter of getting enough in me. Um, I had a whole bunch of bananas and apples in the morning because I found that those held me pretty well. And then, you know, a couple hours of work go by and it's like, man, I'm hungry again. So I just ended up making uh, new recipes, incorporating a bit more um, coconut oil and um, uh, almond butter in my diet. Um, and of course the bananas and um, 
uh, avocados are fatty and they, they help me longer. Um, and yeah, more recently, I've actually been thinking about having more food. Like, and that's why I got on the, um, oh, what's that called? The, the, the powder you, you recommended to me? Um, the Pyridine protein powder? Yeah, that's definitely been helping a lot too. Awesome, yeah. So actually, we could jump into there unless there's something that, um, you know, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, wanna jump too far ahead, but so stop me if you need to. But then I seen you most recently at Kim and Jeremy's. What was that for? Was that for Thanksgiving or is that for Kim's birthday or something? Um, I think it was Kim's birthday weekend. It was her birthday, yes. Okay, so it wasn't that long ago and I seen you and you had, you came there with your father and I think your mother-in-law or uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Step yep. Your stepmom, okay, cool. And I met them and, you know, they were super awesome, super kind and supportive. It was really nice to talk with all three of you, actually. And it's cool to see that your parents are backing you in the way that you want to eat healthier. So, yeah. you know, a lot of that's that's a big win. You know, that's a big hurt. That's a big thing to have in your corner because usually a lot of other people have it working against them. You yeah, know, a lot of people are shaming and a lot of people, are, you know, people have to leave the household just so they can try to get well, unfortunately. And but I felt that pressure before. Sorry to interrupt you. Um, oh, yeah. I've, I've felt that pressure from people like outside the family, like, you know, coworkers or, yeah. you know, customers who have been like, oh, you're having a banana or you're having an apple. Why would you, like, you're skinny. Why would you have this stuff? I was like, because it's good. <laughs> yeah. If you're skinny, it's still a healthy food. Right. Yeah. A lot of people don't get it. It's like, you can eat whatever you want. It's like, well, if I want to feel terrible, I can, I guess. <laughs> Right. But I got, I was talking with you guys there and I was kind of, you know, showing you guys some of my before and after photos and what I had been getting into and working a little bit with DTM. And, you know, I know that you had expressed some of the challenges that you were having with gaining weight. You wanted to gain more muscle. You were telling me you were doing lots of like bicep curls because, you know, especially in the arms, you wanted to get your arms a little bigger. And uh, did you find that anything that I would like, what did you find? Did you get anything out of what I was saying? Was it anything that I was saying helpful? And when you started to implement it, did you notice any difference? Yeah, so um, I found it, I haven't done much more in the way of workout than I've usually done. Right. Um, but in general, um, it's definitely been helpful since I've been doing a lot more like, um, do you mean like with diet or with workout? Yeah, with diet. Yeah, so especially with the green stuff. I have found okay. that green juice is like uh, the, the blast. That blast is incredible. Yeah, the uh, lemon ginger blast. And, and the, the taste is like almost overwhelming, but when, once it actually gets down the hatch, it's like, oh my God, that, like, that makes my body feel like electric. It's amazing. You know, it's so funny. Whenever I drink that, let's say I haven't had it in a while, I'll drink it and I'll look tan because I have like so much circulation to my face and I'll notice like my hair will be less flat. It'll be like thick. It's like, it feeds every part of my body right. and I'll notice like my testosterone is up. I have more confidence. I just feel better. And like, you could take me when I'm sitting in a house all day and I'm kind of white, give me that juice and I get tan or I, I could be out in the sun a lot. And if I'm not drinking it, I'll just be kind of white still. But it's like, when I bring in that juice, it's like, it really just brings life and circulation to the body. Man, I've been slacking on the juicing because, um, uh... Ever since I've had the personal problems in the last week or so, it's like, oh, I'll, I'll get back to juicing when I do. It's like, I need to do that like presently because like when, especially when I took that juice to work, like that, that had me popping. I was ready to go. Yeah. So, so before we had chatted, were you doing just mostly fruit? Were you doing like avocados, bananas? Were you eating much for salads or green juice or what were you doing? Oh yeah. I was doing the John Rose man salad pretty much every salad. dinner. Nice. Um, in the mornings, I had a, uh, a banana, like probably like five, usually five bananas I'll crush up in the morning and mix in almond butter. It's like a really nice kind of pudding, but not pudding. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> and uh, for lunch while I'm at work, I'll just scarf down as many bananas and apples as I can because we only get 15 minute breaks. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's so funny how like one of the big aspects of this show is I kind of talk about how working really can be detrimental. And it's like, how do we earn money in a way that actually enhances our health? But that'll be for another another episode for sure. So, okay, when we were talking, uh, you started implementing the green juice. Did I get you eating sprouts or any of these other things? I don't yes. remember off the top of my head. 
uh, I started eating a whole lot of broccoli sprouts. I had them for the first time whenever you recommended them to me. And I was like, they're delicious. And they leave me just much less hungry for a long time. I'm like, holy yeah. crap, this stuff is Like more deep. of like a stable energy where you're not craving sugar all day. Yeah. And it's, it's good to put on anything. Like I'll have... Uh, like a fruit bowl, I'll toss it on top of the fruit. One of the man salads, I'll, I'll put it all through the salad. It's, it's really good stuff. Nice. And I remember that it made me feel really good. I remember one of the days you messaged me and you're like, I haven't had this much energy in years. Absolutely. <laughs> and it's, it's funny because we didn't focus on up in the calories. We focused on up in the minerals, up in the nutrients. Whereas though, especially the people who get really low in weight, really deplete it and kind of miss out on a lot of that because yes, fruit has minerals. We also have to get like a lot of fruit and you got to get a, like a really good quality fruit to really get those deep, deep minerals. That's, that's my thought process on it. But when you take in these, especially sprouts and green juice, you really condense it in a way where it's bioavailable and you can, and you feel as though now when you get those sugars and you get all these other things coming into your body, you can properly utilize them. So now you have all the energy and the nutrition and you cover more of your bases. Yeah, you, you really know what you're talking about. And you know, I'm, I'm living proof that, you know, you, you do know what you're talking about. I've, I've gotten so much higher energy levels since uh, making use of your suggestions. And um, I, I really am appreciative of everything that you've helped me with. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. That makes me feel really good, but I also wanted to throw, give you know, throw some love your way. I mean, you're working really hard. You're doing, you're uh, moving boxes all day and you're doing a lot of physical activity on top of just living your life. And overcoming these things that most people don't have to, you know, overcome, you know, just some really deep challenges that you face. And I really want to commend you for coming out on the other side of that because it takes a lot, man. I appreciate that. I mean, yeah. I've only ever known, like, you know, keep going. Why would you ever quit? You know, <laughs> yeah. it's a good mentality to have. And through it, I mean, it seems though you're finding, uh, you're not only finding yourself and you know, what you love to do, but you're finding a lot of good people who are supportive and good friends. And I know that you're looking forward to Woodstock Fruit Festival, right? Am I oh wrong? yeah, I can't wait. Okay, yeah, you're gonna love it. It's gonna be your first year. There's gonna be so many people there. And I, it's a little cliche. I say this a lot on the podcast because there's so many things that are a little cliche, but it's almost like these problems can really lead us to things that we would have never found otherwise. And I hope that with all the struggle and all the challenges you have had, that not only do you come out on top, but you come out better than ever and finding more appreciation for life and more opportunities, having a higher standard of living and you're hungry to just go for what you might have not otherwise gone for. Oh, hungry in every sense of the word for, for the food, for the knowledge. Um, I've come out with a much higher pain tolerance <laughs> and uh, yeah. it, it really just restored my faith in people. I mean, for how many people were there for me through the whole experience, I was like, wow, like it, people aren't selfish. They just, you know, everyone has their own problems. And when it really comes down to it and somebody's really hurting and needs help, people are there for you. Yeah, I love that, dude. And um, I feel as though, even though I barely know you, that I have so much faith and trust in who you are. You know, I think that you're one of the, I, I don't say this lightly, like one of the kindest you know, most empathetic people that I know, you know, you really have a gentle heart, you really have good intentions and you're always just looking to do your best and be your best. And I really respect that. Man. That makes me really happy to hear. I really appreciate that. Um, I haven't met too many guys who are as emotionally in touch as you are. Uh, I, I know, I know a lot of guys just kind of like push it down and like, Oh, I don't have emotions. It's just, that's just surface level stuff. Like, no, that's, that's real life right there. And yeah, right. having a real sense of who we are and how we, I guess, what makes us tick. That's, that's your emotions. And that's, that's real life. I really appreciate that. And likewise. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, we're going to start closing up here. Is there any closing thoughts or any messages you want to leave to the, the hungry people? Um, juicing is difficult, but only if you make it difficult. I mean, I had the masticators, so I think that combined with not juicing enough, I think I had, what was it? Usually a gallon to a gallon and a half. If I had two gallons, I probably would have been able to go much longer. Right. Or maybe you even would have just had, even if you want the same amount, you might've had better results or, you know, less, um, less of that irritation. Yeah. And, 
you know, if you're hungry, you're doing it wrong. So I was definitely doing it wrong. Okay. But the, the fact that I still came out on the other side much better and just feeling better, you know, juicing can be difficult, but as long as you approach it and understand that it's going to be a challenge, it's going to be a time commitment because sometimes I was juicing at night for like two and a half to three hours. Like, I don't, it definitely shouldn't take that long. No, it shouldn't take that long. I made it take that long. So I guess everyone's different. <laughs> and look at that. And look at that. Even though you had to do it for two or three hours, you still were doing it. Whereas me, it takes, sometimes it takes like 20 minutes and I can't be bothered. <laughs> but when I do, I never, I always enjoy the juice, you know, so much. So it is enjoyable. that's what I want to say is another thing is a lot of people will jump into a really long juice fast just because they want to lose weight or maybe they don't feel the best. And but with you, it feels as though, you know, you were going through something real and you, you saw this and you thought it was something that could really help you. So it wasn't like you were doing it for some superficial reasons. It was like you were trying to heal your body. You were trying to come back to life. And I think that that's really commendable. You know what I mean? You weren't, you weren't doing it out of like the, just the ability to, I don't know, take, take a reason. But there's a lot of yo-yoing out there. You were doing this because you were trying to save your own life. Yeah. I mean, it was just, so there's just some things you do in life that you just feel this overwhelming urge, like, I need to do this. That was just one of those moments I was like, I have to, I have to go through this, and it's just something that has to be done. I don't care how inconvenient it is. I don't care how much I might not want to do it going in, because truly, it was for the best. Yeah, and I love that. And the good news is, as you continue to get healthier and stronger, and again, this is now a reoccurring theme with the other interviews I had people that are one, two, three years in, they're just feeling, you know, they're finally getting, the, they've been resting enough and they finally are getting more nourished and they're ready to take their lives to the next level. They're ready to go after their careers. They're ready to get more into fitness. And I feel as though you're really on the up. You know, you're in a place where things are going to continue to go up. Health is going to continue to improve, you know, get that weight up a little more, get some strength and just come into your own, man. I'm excited to see it. I mean, you're still so young. So you got a lot of awesome things ahead of you. And I definitely am always here as well, just to even chat about some things you're going through. And same thing to me. I know I know I can do the same with you. So that feels really good to have someone, you know, in my corner for the for the days that kind of seem like they're a little overwhelming. Yeah, you know, I'm in your corner and uh, you're you're a very good influence on my life. I really appreciate, you know, the the coaching, the the reassurances, like, you know, man, it's just where we're at. We're we're doing the right thing. And it's, it's not something that has to be painful. You know, it's, it's, it's a fun process. It's life. Yeah. And as you get healthier and stronger, it becomes easier and you get more excited. So there's the good news. It's not always an uphill battle. All right, BB. So we're going to end it right there. Uh, this was awesome. I think people are really going to enjoy this. I think your sincere and vulnerability is really touching to me. I think I'm going to have a really great time rewatching this one. I always love rewatching the interviews and yeah, man. Uh, Thanks for having me. It's, it's really been an honor. Cool. And I would love to touch base maybe in a couple of months or a little while out, maybe what Woodstock will, will make something happen. Absolutely. Awesome. Okay, man. I hope you have a great night and take care. Thanks. You too. Peace.